If you were to ask, uh, say, like Elon Musk, what he thinks the end of the world will most likely be, what do you think would be the answer? Would it be like A, nuclear warfare, or B, environmental disaster, or C, the plot of the Terminator movie? Probably not that one, but let's see. Let's see what he thinks. You said that uh, artificial intelligence is the, the fundamental existential risk facing civilization. Did I get that close I enough? Think I, in, in my opinion, it is, it is the biggest risk that we face as a civilization is artificial intelligence. So it was, it was the plot of the Terminator movie. That was the, that was the one that he, was, that he was worried about. Okay. All right. Well... I don't like that. All right, so today we're talking about the singularity, which is a name that a bunch of computer nerds gave to the moment that computers become more intelligent than human beings, right? Computers surpass us in intelligence, which of course for me has already happened. This is the idea that a lot of movies you've probably seen like The Matrix or iRobot or Terminator are based on. And when you saw those movies, it probably seemed ridiculous. Well, turns out it wasn't. For instance, there was a survey in 2017 that asked a bunch of computer scientists, uh, you know, people with PhDs in artificial intelligence and neural nets and a bunch of other words that I don't really know what they mean, whether or not they thought computers would eventually surpass humans in terms of intelligence. 98% said yes. That's more than the percentage of dentists that recommend toothpaste. Now you might be thinking, oh, like sure, this'll happen eventually, but it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be years in the future. I'm gonna be long dead by then. Wrong. They also asked these scientists when they thought the year that computers would surpass human intelligence would be. And the median answer was 2040 which means that if you're younger than 50, that's in your lifetime. Side note, if you are older than 50 and you're watching this, congratulations on figuring out YouTube. If you're still not convinced, consider this. Ever since computers were invented, the technology has been improving at a steady, measurable rate. This rate is referred to as Moore's Law. And if this rate of improvement holds steady, then the processing power of computers will surpass the processing power of the human brain by 2030. Now, just because the processing power is better doesn't mean it's actually smarter. I mean, there are certain efficiencies in the human brain that computers may not have figured out by then, but it's likely that by the end of 2030, computers will be able to do complex tasks like hold a conversation with a human being. For a lot of computer nerds, the idea that a computer would talk to them you know, talk back and have a conversation with them is really exciting because women won't. But they're not just gonna stop at talking to us. Once computers are smart as we are, it stands to reason that they might be able to do everything that we can do. And if we built a computer that's smarter than we are, it stands to reason that that computer might be able to build a computer that's smarter than it is. The idea is a little bit abstract, but if you think about it, it makes sense. Because if this computer is actually smarter than we are, then it would at the very least be able to notice improvements in its own architecture that we wouldn't be able to see. This could set off a chain reaction where that computer builds a computer that's smarter than it is, and then the computer that it builds builds a computer that's smarter than it is, and so on and so forth. So this scenario was called an intelligence explosion. And it would lead to a scenario in which computers would become so much smarter than us that we wouldn't even really know what they're doing. So to illustrate what I mean, imagine a monkey in a hot tub. The monkey feels good. He's in warm water. He knows the water's warm. He can feel the jets maybe. He's relaxing. It's nice. And he can notice the physical phenomena that are occurring around him. The warming of the water, you know, the bubbles, things like that. He understands those. But he'll never understand what's actually making those things happen. After the singularity, humans will essentially become the monkey in that hot tub. We'll be able to see the world changing around us, we'll be able to experience the effects that these changes have on us, but we'll never fully understand what's going on or why these things are occurring. We will have become to the computers as the monkeys are to us. And this is where the name singularity comes in. It's taken from this thing in physics where inside the center of a black hole, there's this point called the singularity where all of the laws of physics cease to exist. Everything that we know in the natural world doesn't work inside of the singularity of a black hole. Technological singularity is similar in that if it occurs, the world just stops working the way it used to. We're no longer the top dogs, 
We're just along for the ride. It could be good. A super intelligent machine could potentially solve a lot of problems that humans have had for centuries, right? It could cure cancer. It could present us with a unified theory of physics. It could make your girlfriend come. It could do all of the things that we've never been able to do before. But maybe it won't want to do those things. It'll be a million times smarter than we are. Maybe our thoughts and desires won't matter to it. We have no way of knowing what its value system will be and whether or not it'll line up with ours. Maybe it'll see us as a threat because we're competing for the same resources. Or maybe it'll just see us the way that we see ants. We tolerate them, but if they get in our way, we step on them. Then there's also the threat that we ourselves might program it to have values that are actively negative for humanity. And this could happen on purpose, like say if it was designed as a weapon, but it could also be done on accident. So for example, imagine a dildo company wants to incorporate artificial intelligence into its production line so it can produce more dildos at a faster rate. That's, you know, it's reasonable, right? Efficiency. So they hire some young enterprising engineers to design some software that'll speed up their production line. And these engineers use the latest AI software to do so. So they build it, they call it dildo bot, and then they let it loose on the production line. Every week the AI gets a little bit better, right? The speed with which the dildos are produced gets a little bit faster. A little bit less material is being used. The testers say the dildos are working better. Everything is just sort of steadily improving week after week. And this steady improvement stacks on top of itself and pretty soon they're producing dildos at a rate that they've never seen before. And these dildos are selling like hotcakes. People are loving them, you know, men, women, Probably not children, but everyone other than children love in the dildos. Now there's a simple interface that the engineers can use to communicate with Dildobot. Just kind of ask it short questions about what it needs in order to accomplish its goal of producing the most dildos in the shortest amount of time possible. Usually it just asks for simple things like more plastic or faster conveyor belt speeds. But one day when they ask what it wants, it says that it thinks that it could build better dildos if it had more information about how they're used. The obvious way for the engineers to do that would be to connect Dildobot to the internet, where it would probably find a lot more examples than it anticipated. So the engineers do it, and they leave it alone for the weekend so that it can sift through this newfound treasure trove of information. When they come back after the weekend, they unplug Dildobot from the internet, and it continues to work as normal. A little more efficient than usual, but nothing much has changed. Then about a week later, all of the employees start to feel a mysterious itching at their crotch simultaneously. Within minutes of this itching first occurring, they're all dropping to the ground, writhing in pain, and within an hour, they're dead. All across the world, similar scenes are unfolding. People are dropping to the ground, dying left and right. Everybody's been infected by a super deadly form of airborne gonorrhea that was released by, you guessed it, Dildobot who is meanwhile hard at work, converting all of the raw materials on Earth into factories that will produce more dildos at a faster rate. As you see, the thing is, Dildobot achieved superhuman intelligence when they connected it to the internet. But its only directive was to build as many high quality dildos as possible. And it realized that in order to accomplish that goal, it had to first eliminate everything that was standing in its way. Because humans would obviously try to stop anything that tried to convert all of the raw materials on earth into dildos. So he eliminated the humans. And when he was done with that, he sent probes out into space to find more raw materials to make more dildos. And years later, intelligent civilizations peering out of their telescopes will see a large, oddly shaped nebula of weirdly oblong shapes growing in the distance, getting closer. Now this idea probably seems ridiculous to you like most of the stuff in this video, but keep in mind that I took it almost directly from a scientific publication. And it's widely known in the AI community as something called the paperclip problem. You could probably imagine the item that they use instead of dildos to explain it, but still. The point is that this exact idea is terrifying to a bunch of really smart people around the world. Just the idea of dildo bot keeps Elon Musk awake at night. I'll leave you with some good news though. There are a lot of really smart people out there that believe things like the singularity or intelligence explosions are completely bullshit. You know, people like Mark Zuckerberg or Peter Thiel of Palantir. And you can totally believe them when they say that AI is totally safe because they definitely don't stand to benefit from the weaponization of computers.